today we are creating a DIY textured wall art piece for my dining room. I've been dying to do this project. I'm so excited that I finally have gotten it done and I can't wait to show you guys how it turned out. First, we're gonna start with a dry dex. This is a joint compound and this is the same material that you're gonna use to like kind of patch your holes in the walls. It's gonna dry very similar to a drywall texture. So this is super easy, very affordable. You can buy it at Walmart. Any hardware store will carry it. And then what you're gonna do is you're actually just gonna have some fun with this joint compound. So you're gonna to wanna to think ahead. You wanna make sure that your composition is also gonna be well balanced on your canvas. So this is something that you may wanna pre-plan prior to applying your joint compound on your canvas so for me in this piece of artwork I wanted the majority of the texture to be centered and then towards the top and bottom just a little bit of texture but nothing crazy so it's going to apply pink and then once it's all dry it's going to kind of leave this like sand color with the raised texture this is a 36 by 48 canvas and it's a half inch thick so this is a perfect size for my dining room it's on the larger kind of oversized but I love it and I wanted something that was going to make a statement but I didn't want it to be bold and stand out I wanted it to be a little bit more on the neutral side and I wanted to have a pretty display in my dining room something that wasn't really going to grab a lot of attention this is the same scraper that you would actually use for this joint compound when you're patching up your walls. You can use a variety of different things to apply your joint compound. Depending on what you use, it will also affect the kind of texture and how it will dry when you're all done. So I'm applying the majority of my texture kind of in the center. I'm going up a little bit. And then when I was all done, I let it dry for 24 hours. Once it's all dry, we're going to bring it in. And now the fun part begins. You wanna make sure that you lay down a cloth canvas. This is crucial, especially if you are painting indoors like I am. So to start off, I have about a little less than a fourth cup of water. We're gonna do a wash. So I'm gonna mix up some acrylic paint. This is in the color warm gray. You can buy this at Hobby Lobby. And then I have about a fourth cup of water in there. And then I'm also going to just kind of take this nice, big, wide, fluffy brush. You can buy this at Hobby Lobby as well. This is my favorite go-to brush when I am painting large canvases. And then what we're gonna do is we are just going to mix this warm gray color with the water. It's gonna be a water texture um, and thickness, so it's gonna be very Next watery. Next we're gonna take some why titanium you white canvas. And I'm actually gonna put a cloth underneath to catch all the drips. my little paint can. So I wanna do this because I wanna lighten it up. I don't want it that dark. For the wash, it's just gonna provide our canvas with a really good base to start. Then it's also going to just apply a really soft, soft color before we get in there and add all the fun details. So with this type of painting, it's really important that you take your time, especially in between drying each different acrylic paint color. So first we have our compound. It's totally dry. Now we're going in with the wash. I like to just start from top to bottom. You'll see it kind of drip down, which is totally fine. What I've noticed about doing a wash too is when you are adding multiple layers to a canvas, this wash will actually pull through the layers of paint. So I just think it's a really great way to add a lot of cool texture. You can obviously skip this step if you don't feel like it's necessary for the type of painting you're wanting to create. But for me, I found it very useful and I just feel like my canvases turn out so much better when I just do a very light, basic wash all over the canvas before we start adding in all of our colors. All right, so now that we have applied our wash, we're gonna go in and we're gonna mix our warmer color, which is gonna be applied to the center of the canvas. I did a nice dollop of burnt umber. This is kind of a brown, it is a brown color, but it's a little bit more on the grayer scale, it has a gray undertone to it, so it's not pulling any of the red tones. And I really like it, but then I also added some white because I felt like it was a little too dark than what I was wanting. So I added a nice dollop of titanium white. So we're gonna mix this up and I felt like it's now a little too light. So I actually went in with a, this burnt umber which has a little bit more of a redder undertone. It's way warmer than the burnt umber color and I feel like this is kind of the perfect mix that I'm wanting. I want it to have a neutral look and feel and I feel like this is the perfect color that will also complement the rest of the canvas. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start applying this color to the center of the canvas. Now wherever you're gonna apply your darker color, 
this is what's also going to show through that top layer of acrylic paint to finish it off. You're just going to go in with a really light hand. You don't need to press hard at all. I'm using a very light hand, almost kind of feathering it in a little bit. Because your joint compound, when it gets wet, it may tend to soften a little bit. So you don't want to lose that raised texture. But once it's all dry, then you're perfectly fine. So you can see I applied the majority of the dark color in the center of the canvas. And then just on the bottom, I'm just going to briefly touch up a little spots where I wouldn't mind some of the dark color showing through. So this is how your canvas is going to look once it's all dried and applied. I like to do some messy brush strokes. It's my preference. I just feel like it gives it a much more relaxed and laid back look instead of trying to make it look perfect. So once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply our whitewash. This is just our titanium white paint mixed with a little bit of water. You don't want it as thin as water. Just want it a little bit more thicker um, because this is going to be applied over the entire canvas. You wanna make sure that when you are applying this, I did not press hard into the canvas. You're just gonna go in with a really light hand and just basically give it a nice whitewash over the entire thing. So you're gonna see all the dark areas where you apply the warmer color. It's gonna show through the white and that's the look that I'm going for. So I wanted something that was gonna be more neutral. I didn't really want a big statement piece of artwork to catch your eye. I wanted it to be just subtle, um, but large and just kind of neutral so that's what we're going for today now it's time to build our floating frame for our artwork I went to Home Depot, I just picked up one by two pieces of pine. You can also use MDF board as well. It would be much lighter, but I like the look and feel of a heavy frame. So I just took out some wood glue and we're just gonna glue all four corners first. Once you glue all four corners, I just went in and took my brad nailer gun and I just nailed probably two nails per corner so that way it's nice and secure. I also cut these little pieces so that way the artwork has something to sit on. Since my canvas is a half inch, this worked out perfectly so that way it looks like it's floating and it's not set back in the frame. I also grabbed some wood filler. I just did a little bit of this to fill in my brad nailer holes. So that way the frame looks like it has a nice and seamless finish. I took some sandpaper and I just sanded down the frame before we go in and we start painting. All right, once the frame was all done being built, I laid the piece of artwork inside just to double check that the size fits and it does which is always a miracle i ended up adding these wall brackets to the back of my artwork super easy you can buy these at hobby lobby they're so cheap i believe they're like 4.99 and they come in a pack now originally i was actually going to leave the artwork in the natural color frame but once i put it on the wall i just was not vibing with it it felt like it clashed it didn't complement the artwork very well so i ended up spray painting it outside which i would have done beforehand so I had to tape it off. Anyways, it ended up turning out great. I marked my holes in the wall with the brackets on the back of my artwork. Once my frame was completely dry, I hung it up on the wall. And this is the final result. I'm super happy with how it turned out. And I think it's perfect for my dining room. Mm -hmm. 